beach. A beach. Would you describe this beach for me, please? White sand. Mm-hmm. Alligators swimming out in the distance. Mm -hmm. Palm trees, bushes, ferns, mm -hmm. long slender leaves. What is this beach? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Look around the beach and see if you see anything interesting in this beach. Just mm -hmm. I hear. I hear. What do you hear? Just light. Mm -hmm. Tinkling. Just like fairy love. Just soft. It's like I'm here, but I'm not here. Mm -hmm. Like it is. But it isn't like it's between and betwixt. It's the place between. So allow yourself to just go into it even deeper. Just let go some more. Drift into that state of nothingness. Angel has its hand out. Mm -hmm. Says, just, just step out. It's okay. Mm -hmm. just, just come. Is this angel going to guide you? That's shifting mm -hmm. light. Shifting vibration. There are a lot of them just helping. Mm hmm. Where do you see these angels? They're actually always there. Mm -hmm. You just don't see them. Mm hmm. They're in the in between place? Yes. Mm hmm. What's happening now? He's... <laughs> He's Jesus is laughing at me. He's like, I'm here. Mm -hmm. You need to let go. Just let go. So just take a deep breath in, and as you release that breath, just let go even more. <sighs> You're safe. Feel that safety of being in this beautiful place with so many there to assist you. You've been here before. What's happening now? He's right before me. He's waiting me. He's kind of waiting on me. Mm -hmm. So allow yourself to let go. now just let it go mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus is so funny I'm sorry mm -hmm. <laughs> he's really funny what is he he's saying? like he's like it's a process mm -hmm. it's a process it's harder to work with a ball of steel than it is with a ball of yarn Mm-hmm. So patient. So is he calling you a ball of steel? Yes. Mm. <laughs> He's 
ist, als wir damals wie vor. Mhm. Mm Hinhaus, the super, when he, when I feel just like he's, it's like he's overlaying me. Mhm. Mm it's like just, it's all right. Just breathe that steel ball and make it just flexible. Allow your breath to connect even more. Using those deep breaths. What's happening now? He's waiting. Mm-hmm. It's like he's touching me to see if he can... mouth. Mm -hmm. It's like he's just being really patient. Mm-hmm. It's like he wants to step in, but it's like... It's like... It's like... What I'm hearing him saying <clears throat> he's just gonna start. Mm -hmm. And then as he starts speaking, he's just gonna gradually come in because mm -hmm. he's used to speaking next to me. Mm -hmm. And his what he wants to do is impose himself on me, but since I am not in the I am more human than allowing the, the light to come through. Mm -hmm. He's just going to work with me in, in the way that he has, which is being with me, and he's going to try and just ease in as it, as it goes on. He's just going to say, well, this is what is. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start from this point, and we're going to go in. And so he says the first thing he wants me to do 
He likes to sit like this. Mm-hmm. The first thing is before we begin anything, we have to dwell within the breath. So we're going to breathe in slowly with intention, listening to the God within the breath. bringing in the light from above through the ground chakra, releasing it out through the feet, allowing the energy to go down into Mother Earth, breathing in light, inhale. Acknowledge the opening of the head for the light that comes within, within your breath. Also acknowledging the healing light that radiates into your palms whenever you can begin to meditate or begin your breath. The light comes in through your hands, comes in through the top of the head, allowing the flow to go through the part that is essential is when you're breathing out, is allowing that breath, the energy to flow down through your feet, down into Mother Earth, letting any excess vibration, any excess energy flow directly into the Earth. So therefore, if bringing the connection down from the higher light, from your higher self, bringing it down, cleansing, clearing, and releasing it to Mother Earth. This is part of a cycle, a wave. I always speak of the breath. Oh, I always speak of waves. So, the waves began. If you remember, you were on a hill eons and eons ago. At the beginning, when there was vibrational harmony, when people were of the same vibration. People could feel the breath. People could feel the connection with the God force, with the energy. It was interconnected. What happened at that time, and there was a urge, a need, a desire for many to want to expand their knowledge to expand what is, to experience more. And there was a conscious choice at that time to go beyond the harmony, 
to go beyond the vibrational convergence to expand the knowledge, to expand the experience, to expand what is. And so from that point the expansion took place and from the harmony became the yin and the yang, introducing judgment, introducing disharmony, introducing more vibrations. You were on the hill at that point with many other teachers, aware of the change, of the shift. This entity's first thing was, here we go, I'm not coming back, I don't want to be part of this. Your choice was to always come back and to assist. So if you could see on a hill there are many teachers. Down on the hill it went on and what was harmony began to ripple, began to expand. And if you will, the Garden of Eden changed in a search for knowledge, changed in a search for expansion, changed in a search of more of what is. And at that time, everything changed. Judgment came in, yin, yang, just the varied fragments became into existence. Now the one thing that most people have forgotten, but do you remember with part of their essence, is that as the main vibration harmony broke, shattered, expanded. You would see it see it yourself as a as a, as an expansion. Okay? From this expansion, their waves are going outward. Infinity going outward from the expansion. From the reaching out, from the wanting to know. Now these waves that came from the wanting the expansion, the wanting the knowledge, wanting to know more of what it is, wanting to know more of the essence by experiencing what is not of harmony. So the expansion, the waves coming out, the waves never stopped. The waves never stopped. That is what people are hearing, that's what people are sensing, is that I don't want to use primordial, but the expansion of wanting more, the expansion of wanting the knowledge, expansion of what is, created those waves. And the waves since that time of diversion have continually been calling us back. So the same waves that expanded are still within the universe, but they, at this point they are calling us back. And as more and more people begin the journey back, they begin the experience of the waves, they begin sensing the waves. They're like, it's, oh, the waves are coming. The waves have been there. Mm. The waves have been there since the beginning of the expansion. It's a result of the expansion causing the waves, and the waves are back, but they are in a way not pushing us out but they are like a tsunami mm -hmm. going out mm -hmm. from the expansion. And then when you the access, the opposite side is a calling back in, the calling back in, the waves curling back. So what we're feeling is not the original expansion, mm -hmm. but the calling back of the waves, the calling back. And warmer people are feeling the waves, they're feeling the intensity of the waves. The waves originated from that moment of reaching for more than what is and not to tell tales in this entity but this entity did not want the harmony to stop but that was the first stop after the harmony changed was what have you done what have you done and that is the entity that was in this body 
and it has spent most of its time on earth in monasteries, in temples, as a priestess, on the edge of society. And there are many that are still <sighs> affected <sighs> by the original leaving of the harmony. And it is not a judgment, it is just what is. Some people were able to come back to work, to heal. Um, there are some parts of it that went off and expanded in good ways, some ways that expanded in bad, which is the original reason we talk about there is no good, there is no bad. There is real no judgment because the beginning of harmony, we all were the light vibration energy resonance and it was in that search to know more of what you are through more of what you are not that it began from that moment the contrast the contrast began mm -hmm. in search of knowing more of what we are which is in the beginning the light the source the harmony of existence. So what do you say to all of those people who are just tired of all this contrast and want to go home? Understand. The expansion. Think of it as a big bang. You know, you don't know when you're in that place of peace and you want the experience and you have that big bang. You don't know what the consequences are, what will happen. It's like wanting to always climb the, the Himalayas mm -hmm. and you finally are climbing it and it's a lot harder. Mm -hmm. But this is something that you have always wanted to do in your heart, but it doesn't mean that because it's not worthwhile that the journey isn't arduous. Mm -hmm. If it was easy to walk up a mountain, it wouldn't be the same journey. Mm -hmm. It's the strength and the development and the hardness that develop from the journey. That's what changes us. That's what we strive for. Mm -hmm. And in this life we may not remember, oh I wanted to climb the Himalayans. I just thought there would be something I would really grow from, I would mm -hmm. really love. Well you know what, when you're in the middle of that mountain and you're in a blizzard and you run out of food and that there's really not that much air there, mm -hmm. you don't want to be there, you want to be at base camp and you're like, I don't want to be here, I'm not having a good time. My basic needs feel like, feel like they're not being met. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is something that's core right now. Mm -hmm. A lot of basic needs are not being met. There are a lot of people on the slopes of that mountain in blizzards that have run out of food that feel like they don't even have air. Mm -hmm. There seems to be a big disconnect. We all seem to be climbing that mountain by ourselves at this time. Many people come to me alone, seeming that they're the only ones who are awake. So, you're climbing a mountain and you feel isolated. <laughs> and the snowflakes themselves feel like they are turning against you. Let us imagine. Let us visualize that the snowflakes are not just snowflakes. They're 
are the legions of light that surround you and even though you see nothing but blizzards and isolation because of where you are in that mountain you are not able with the perception that is your reality to know and feel and experience the light the true light the lights mm -hmm. and I'm going to just flip it a little bit so you see yourself in one reality is in a mountain and barren and isolated let's allow your vibration your perception your reality to do a flip the snow does not exist in reality in a different part of who you are and this is not easy but you have to imagine it expand yourself this is an expansion time you are not part of you yes is in that snow is in that blizzard does not have food does not have water is on that but in another just as valid reality dimension vibration your essence is surrounded by beings of light the snow itself are angels supporting you the lack of breath is a calling to who you are it is not an easy perception but there is never one reality there's never one time there's never just one experience there's never one dimension it's when we are locked in and I understand it this entity has experienced it too you are literally locked into that reality but that is not if you're in a room and you're just in a room and a monk comes in and he sits down and he chants and it's one of the chants that the tones break mm -hmm. and in that chanting you literally see the walls begin to vibrate and you realize that everything you see is really not what you see and even though you're room and you're in this existence it literally does not exist and literally in time and space you are not there that even the tones themselves are all just fragments of a reality the time in a mountain as a fragment of reality so one fragment of reality is that that is just your perception that it is just a part of time and space another part of reality it is real that you were locked in another part of the reality is before you came in you decided you really need to climb that mountain for your own expansion another part of the reality is that when you do cross over you will go wow that one part when I was all alone and I thought I was all alone I grew more from that part where I thought I was isolated than any of my other lives one experience is not just one experience as they say the blind man and the elephants it is just that is just one part and I have said it over and over again by and I'm going to continue to say it over and over again breathe every day that breath that time you take connection is part of changing your perception and reality that time you take to reestablish the time you take to come back in to establish that this is a completely different reality than everything out there and over over and over I can say it every breath for the rest of my life please please take that time to breathe even if it's to know that this is just a perception and if you can take that time to connect to the and I don't want to say reality the breath within yourself 
will link you, will connect you to more than what is going on now. It is essential. It is so essential to connect to that breath, to find out that there is more than what you see. It is essential to go up and connect to the earth and feel the vibration of the earth and to reestablish that life essence energy reconnection that is essential it brings in another variety dimension to your life it is important to go out and look at the stars or look at the clouds or go up and open yourself to the above to the other light love that is literally shining down continually it is essential to take care of yourself you can be in that mountain and it is your reality but I have said over and over and I will continue to say please breathe every day if it's only to take that time to remind you that that mountain is just that mountain, that externality. The breath is your connection to your higher self. It's connection to your angels. It's a connection to God for us. It's connection to me. It's connection to all the light. You chose, we all chose, this person chose to walk up the mountain. There is that reality within yourself. I will be honest, I harp on this one all the time. Take a breath, breathe. Breathe when you wake up. Take a moment. This world is crazy right now. It's divided, it's separated. Take the time to become unified with yourself. Take the time to become unified with your source. Find a different perception than just the mountain. This one is going through the mountain too. And I have said over and over to her every day, breathe, stop. I am not discounting any struggle. But like I said, there are varieties part of that struggle. There's never just one easy answer. Just like there is not one perception of who Jesus is. Just like there's not one perception of who any one of us are. As many perceptions and sides of the person that you are is as many different dimensions and perceptions of what you're going through. I am just asking you again to take that time to breathe, to reach beyond where you are in the mountain. Allow your perception to change. Because I will tell you with everything that I know, that those snowflakes are beings of light. That that snow that you're walking on are angels supporting you in this existence. Many and many cannot see beyond the one perception of reality which is why I say, please breathe, please connect, please drink water, please go outside, please put your feet in the ground, please open up to the sky above, please listen to who your guide is, whether it's Jesus, Buddha, Mother Mary, they are part and intertwined with your journey. You may not hear them, but it doesn't mean we're not here. Just like this being is not aware that I am literally hovering around her. I 
and I have been for days. Hmm. What was so important for us to meet today? Why at this time? Some for the wave. Mm -hmm. People have been caught on the wave, mm -hmm. which is part of the original expansion. Part is humanity's splitting apart like a turkey bone, mm. a wishbone, in one perception. There is much anger, diversity, arguing. There is a lot of that out there right now. But, you know, back when I was hauled in, there was so much diversity between the church and the people. I am aware, all of the angels are aware of the disruption, the conflict, the despair that comes with the conflict. It just seems too many that the darkness is there more than the light. There's much sadness much feeling of being overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> not to simplify things. <clears throat> but when you can see only darkness. Okay, let's see. Right now it's almost like darkness is a very condensed ball. Mm -hmm. And most people see the earth as a very tight condensed ball of tar. Mm. And that's one perception of it. You could also, and don't forget your imagination is powerful, your thought is powerful. So, even if you see, you know, in your mind, the dirt, the, the world right now is a ball of tar. Allow your imagination, allow your higher thought to also bring in the air, the light that transmutes it, that changes it, and lets the tall dissolve because you remember light is stronger than darkness. And what you can see is a ball of tar is just that construction of tar. It doesn't see all the light around it. It doesn't see all the transmission agents around it. And when you do it universally or cosmically, the earth is a really tiny little speck of dirt. Hmm. That literally the universe could swallow and change it and make it part of itself. Even though this seems like a huge ball of tar, in relation to what is, in relation to the hugeness of the universe and the cosmos and all the light and all the healing that is coming in. Like we spoke of her being as a ball of steel. Mm -hmm. Air and light and heat can come in and make fine little grains or like snowflakes growing through it and transmuting it and just Everything has a possibility of being transmuted. So while you are in this overwhelming days of sadness, there is like the, the a time in the mountain. You are just seeing that time in the mountain when you're isolated. But beyond that, one person in the 
on the mountain, you are surrounded by light. You are surrounded by angels supporting you. At this time, so many people are only aware of that point they are on the mountain, of the diversity of the, of the conflict. They do not, they, they are aware of the conflict that's just eating it and just tearing each other apart. And they don't see that beyond that, around that, surrounding that. And I don't mean to minimize it, but say the cosmo is this wonderful being of light, and the earth is uh, is a is a growth that's being cankerous. That's just not healing. Mm -hmm. You got to remember, there's a whole cosmic, and even though the earth is a cancer that's not healing well, all around it is a cosmos in the universe that is perfectly capable of healing, of sending light, of sending love, and healing. The cancer is healing the cancer right there. Mm. So we are, even though we are in the midst of conflict within the universe, we are also in the midst of healing. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, I am not the only one speaking. There are many teachers speaking. There are many people speaking in channels that are like, we understand that it's conflict there, understand it feels like there is darkness. But it is nothing that cannot be healed by the enormous love and healing that surrounds you. And you are not alone. That little canker so that is cancerous on the cosmos body is completely capable of being healed. Mm -hmm. So, in one reality, you are alone, you're isolated, you are buffeted by snow and ice. In the other reality, you are part of a loving, healing, light source that is perfectly capable of healing you like that, mm -hmm. less than that. Mm -hmm. But because of disparity, you're seeing more channelings and more people speaking and more people coming down saying, it's okay, it'll be all right, just trying to comfort you. And there will be more and more people and channels trying to comfort you. But you have to, and and this is what I come here for. I come here to remind you to breathe. I keep reminding you to go inside to find it was truly of your essence. To connect with Mother Earth and get that healing light transference going between you and Mother Earth. To take that time and to go out and bring down the stars or bring down the light. There are tools every day to use. You can and you will get caught up in what's out there, but you can also just as validly choose to go within and begin the healing process. And it starts with you. It starts with you. The healing, the breathing, the OM, mm -hmm. your sacred sounds. Your body is filled with solutions. Go out and dance with the fairies. Go out and sing with the wind. Mm -hmm. Go out and dance with the animals. Breathe, hum, om, sacred sounds. Centering, grounding. There are so many ways this body has of healing, of connecting to positivity. And I will continue since this is what I bring forth to remind you to breathe. Breathing in, breathing in the light and love. Literally breathing it in. Releasing it out through your feet, letting it go. Breathing in and oming. Listening to the silence.
you have any questions? After that silence, <laughs> it feels a little blissful just to be in that silence. And whoever is watching, please use your silence. Thank you. Many people ask how to meditate. They can't quiet their mind. They can't focus. They can't relax. What's if, happening? If you cannot feel at ease with the breath yet, it is it is a different way of meditating. Mm -hmm. So we will put it forth. If it works for you, use it. If it doesn't work for you, there are other options. So mm -hmm. a way for the mind for someone who is very in the world and very detailed. Mm -hmm. And this is very common. It is out there. And what I would suggest to start with is you always take a shorter breath in to start with than you do releasing. So to begin with the people who have not done breath work, to breathe in for three, easy. Three. Hold it for a second. Out oh, five. That's a very easy one. You're going to think of the letters so you can see them. So, and as you get more comfortable, you go to four and then extend it further. In. And then what you do is you keep expanding that until you can get to seven. And then nine. So you start with the short numbers because those are for people who like to use their brains in that way. You just do one, two, three, start and always breathe out more mm -hmm. because and at the end, please, if you're going to do your numbers at the end of your breath work, say you're doing three and five, you want to breathe and then make sure you push out the last breath really quickly. One, two, three, hold. And you're going to push your breath out at the end to empty your body. That is a health reason to expel everything out so that you have more clean air going out and you've gotten rid of the out. So when you are at the end of any breathing exercise, make sure you breathe out and then push it out even more and knowing that you are getting rid of anything inside of yourself. So so like you're squeezing the air out of a balloon. So that works for that. The other one that you can do is to use your fingers. This is for people that have to do concrete. Mm -hmm. You can either do this without sound or you can do it with sound. Starting out fast and then as you get more comfortable with your breath, slow down. The other way is to breathe in loudly and go to soft or go from south to loud, like starting softly. Another breath work. The other breath work is actually to go out with in nature. Nature is perfect for doing breath work. So you would focus on an area, whether you are weeding or whether you are turning the dirt because you actually want to put your hands in the dirt to meditate. So say for you want to spend 
three or five minutes meditating, you find an area that needs to be cleansed, weeded, trimmed, but you're doing it in a space of meditation, which is different than a space of weeding and having it to do because you have to do it. So you're in the earth, you're focused, say there's an area that you need to weed, but you're not doing it to weed. You're doing it to meditate. So you are focusing on the air, connecting with the earth, removing anything that is a hindrance, clearing out the space. So you are doing this, cleansing and clearing yourself, removing things that do not belong, and you are actually cleansing yourself. I do not need and I do not want this in my life. And actually do it as a cleansing and clearing exercise, taking the weeds out, that do a lot belong and actually feeling that in your life that you are removing what does not belong and you do not want in your life. You can also do this when you are working with a tree or a bush that has branches that are dead and that need to come off for the bush to grow. And so you would also do it not in a trimming mode, but you are removing what is not work in your life, which is not using growth. So you do that and you are literally we taking what is harmful out of your life and you do this as a, a meditative exercise <laughs> so you can use within the breath you can use sound you can use touching you can go out and trim or weed in a way of clearing or cleansing what does not belong and is what not helpful in your life and don't do it as weeding do it as clearing and cleansing another way is you can go out and this of course is only handy in the time when summer comes just before the storm comes the wind changes so you walk out in the storm and this is just the alternate you walk into the storm and literally there is a shift in the atmosphere and the frequency. And if you ever stood out just before a storm, there is that time when literally the wind feels alive. Mm -hmm. So it's just another alternative. There's a lot of alternatives. Mm -hmm. You go out, you stand, and you, you literally have to open your perception to when that wind changes and you can feel electricity. It's almost like it's alive. It's like an entity. And you go ahead and you expand yourself, you allow the wind to come in, to cleanse, to literally blow through you, and you meditate a living wind meditation, if you will, mm -hmm. breathing in the wind, releasing, and doing that as a cleansing. Um, the next one I only do with caution, because you have to make sure you're grounded, and when you first start, make sure you have somebody with you, is to go out, and when dusk, and the stars come out literally and then it's really important that you're grounded that you put your um, energy into the earth that you feel like you're grounded when the stars come out there literally is energy out there there's literally light out there so you can gr ground yourself and then allow yourself to connect with a light and just focus like a lot of meditations does on a light or a candle but this is a different frequency so you're going to go ahead and you're going to look at the stars and literally let, when you are grounded, let your energy go out to the stars and focus on it like you've heard of people focusing on a candle or focusing on a design. You do that on the stars, but you're literally focusing on a different vibrational frequency mm -hmm. when you do the stars. Why is it that someone needs to be with you? Because it's possible that you could pull yourself out of your body. Mm. It's easy, wow. especially if you're drawn to the stars. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people feel that they just, there's such a draw that, that they literally go out and they just are gone. This one herself was gone for an hour and the sun came out and it's like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And gone, just gone. So um, a lot of people are drawn to the stars, which is why I brought that in. But it's a precautionary when you first start because it is easy just to get pulled out. And especially if you're drawn to the stars and you're drawn to the light of the stars, 
just to get mesmerized and just hypnotized and just literally leave your body. It's very easy to leave your body when you look at the stars, mm -hmm. which is why I suggested that last. How do you get back into your body? Uh, this is where you have someone with you. You mm. make sure you drink water because going to the bathroom is the quickest way to come in your body. Mm. Very easy. Uh, another one is to have a timer. Mm -hmm. So our alarm, everybody's got a phone with alarm on it. Just set the phone with the alarm on it. Um, or have someone come out and get you. Real easy way to come back in is uh, to... Um, right around where your chest is mm -hmm. to bring it in. Yes. Stomp your feet on the ground. Um, a very easy way is to so have salty hands. And the salt on your hands will just bring you back instantly. Really? What is it about the salt? The salt's from the earth. Ah, so it grounds you. Very quickly. Okay, very good. So there are a myriad of ways to meditate. I, myself, like the breath. Mm -hmm. Because the breath brings you inside. I mean, everything else is outside. Mm -hmm. that's, and if that's where you want to start, fine. Going outside is just that. It's outside. It's not part of your essence. It's part of the essence. It's part of spiritual essence. It's part of the universal essence. Mm -hmm. But part of being here and remembering is to connect with your breath. But if you need to start somewhere, there's many, many places to start. Hopefully ending up back within your breath, feeling comfortable and quietness mm -hmm. within the breath itself. So there's any way that's positive, that's focusing, that slows your breath, that slows your mind. What do you say to those people who don't have nature around them? They're in big cities with lots of concrete. It's true. They can't see lights out there. Mm -hmm. They can't see the lights. They can't touch the earth, they can't weed, they're in concrete boxes in big cities. Then they are forced into their own body and their own space. Mm -hmm. Which there is nothing wrong. You can also make a altar or whether you want to have your own plants or your own medalla or your own crystals. Uh, even within a very small apartment you can make a sacred space. And we should all have a space that we feel comfortable and safe and sacred with. Mm -hmm. And so you could have that space, whether you need living plants or crystals. Okay, so if you have a, a little garden inside of your home, it's bringing the earth to you? Yeah. Okay. Well, right. Some people prefer crystals because mm -hmm. they are more of a crystal. Okay. So you could do crystals. Mm -hmm. You could bring plants in, but... If you have your own space that you and that you keep sacred, mm -hmm. you know, some people like to have, you know, candles yes. and that makes it sacred or some people like to burn sage. It's whatever. And this is part of the journey discovery, whatever resonates with you. Mm -hmm. So if you reject something that doesn't feel right, that's not something that resonates with you. Right. If you don't like candles. Yes. If you prefer to have crystals, if you prefer to have. A, a little bed of sand with a little rake and and have a different type of a design to have a different vibrational space. Mm -hmm. We all have different we're all different. Mm -hmm. We all have different things that feel good to us. Just like we have different music that feels good to mm -hmm. us. Yeah. If you don't like jazz playing and you like you know, something else then that's what you use. Okay. Good. Now, there's been a lot of talk about changes, earth changes, that are coming. Many people are in fear of this ascension of uh, solar flash, darkness. Can you enlighten us on that? The time when that in the timeline and this is just the perception of this reflection mm -hmm. would have already happened at, at this point it's like a regathering like it could have happened the the darkness and the 
the collapsing was a possibility. Mm -hmm. And it's like that didn't happen. And because of that, we have everything kind of like reorganizing. Reorganizing. Mm -hmm. This is kind of like, yes, we didn't destroy ourselves. Yes, we don't have the days of darkness. Yes, the ascension is not happening as of now. But saying that, the waves that we first spoke of mm -hmm. are continuing. The light and the love and the help are still continuing. We are pretty much battling ourselves now. Mm. We are going into ascension, but it's... You know, humanity's in school. Some are in college, some are in grad school, some are in doctorates, some are schools in, in monasteries. There is a wide range of education and educational needs mm -hmm. in this humanity. So you cannot expect the same ascension awareness within this group of people as within the people that are in the monastery. Mm -hmm. People are going to experience the elephant differently depending on where they are in the elephant. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean the big bang like that happened and, and affected everybody is different than what humanity is experiencing. It's, it's, we're all different. There is so much wide variety of, ex of where each person is, you know, whether they are on the tail of the elephant or the trunk of the elephant or the tusk of the elephant. It's still the elephant, but there is a completely different reality for where they are on the elephant. Just like there is a completely different variance of schooling, whether it's an elementary college in a monastery, in a medical school. Mm -hmm. From the perspective that I am being shown, the only, the growth that I see, it's a whole humanity growth, is a whole vibrational growth. And because there are growth spurts and growth problems, that is what we are going now. But I, as my perspective, of where this entity is coming from, it is just, it is an effect of the waves. Mm -hmm. That there's not going to be ascension and, and big bangs and everybody going into light, everybody going to darkness. That was, that the, the timeline when that happened has already passed, which is why you see that it was always going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. And, and then all of a sudden nothing happened when everyone said it was going to happen. Yes. Nothing really happened. Uh huh. So we're on a different timeline now. Yes, which is good because you really don't humanity plunge into three days of darkness. Right. To be honest, mm -hmm. that's not a really wonderful thing to put a lot of people through. Yeah. So what we're going now is like, that was like a big hole and, and the waves are like reverberating from the big hole, mm -hmm. which is what you see now. But, and I can't say it enough, just because it feels rough, does not mean a rough sea is part of the entire ocean. Mm -hmm. It will soothe out. It will calm down. People are learning. People are growing. Some people are growing without assistance of breath work and grounding and diet and cleansing and taking a moment out of your life to get sanity. Please take a moment out of your life to find sanity. There's so much insanity out there. Please take time to find sanity. And that has always been what I say. Please take time to breathe. Mm -hmm. So with all of this talk of ascension, new earth, all of this, what do you tell the people? As from where I, my vibration comes from, yes. from this perspective, yes, is that there is a change. Mm -hmm. There is an ascension, not in the big bang freaking out of millions of people, mm -hmm. but then that's why I said at the beginning, the story about the waves, rather than more and more people are becoming aware of the waves, more and more people are becoming aware of their own light, 
more and more people are becoming aware of what is and part of being aware of what is and the light that and support and the angels that surround you is you have to have your own light within yourself you have got to have that base of light and breath within yourself mm -hmm. so focus on that yes the the others may come may not come sooner or later because different people are at different stages of growth and expansion mm -hmm. so you don't know and people around you don't know when you are going to become an enlightened person it's that whole thing when are you going to become enlightened mm -hmm. when are you going to leave the world of karma when are you going to leave the the karmatic wheels yeah you know it's all really the same questions mankind has had Mm -hmm. We all have our own growth. We all have our own perception. We all wake up at different times. But mm -hmm. the best way to wake up is to take time every day to breathe and balance. I mean, we're all going to get there, but everybody's at a different place. Okay, so don't worry about what other people are telling you. It's your own. It's your own. It always has been your own path. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it has always been your own path it's always been your own path mm -hmm. always even even back when their buddha was talking about breaking into the wheel and everyone was trying to become enlightened mm -hmm. and hitting nirvana it's always been even when they got kicked out of the garden of eden looking for knowledge and everybody was looking to go back in the garden of even it's all your own journey mm -hmm. i have a question that's been floating around in my mind for a long time about Jesus. What is it that Jesus was talking about for so long on those mountains with all those people? <laughs> <laughs> what would keep people so interested for so long? What was Jesus teaching? The secrets of the soul. The secrets of the soul. Still teaching the secrets of the soul. Mm -hmm. Because it relates to you personally. Because it's the most personal and sacred part of who you are. Because it's a part that makes you know that there's hope. That there's love. That there's light. And it's not out there in a land far away or up in heaven. It's something you carry in you every day in every breath I come to give hope and to help you remember how beautiful you are how much promise there is in every day in every breath I come to remind you of everything that is good and loving Thank you so that so much for that. Will we continue to be learning about the soul from you? I will always be here from you. Mm -hmm. I am a practical everyday teacher. <laughs> so when those think about Jesus, what would be the best way for someone to think about Jesus? What's what would you like to be known for? A teacher. Someone who reminded everyone who I talked to the basics of love, of breath, of life. We all come here for different reasons. We all come here for different relations. But we all have one essential common denominator. We come in with our breath. We leave with our breath. Some people have short breaths. Some people forget how to breathe. Some people get so scared. You hear them say they can't breathe anymore. Mm -hmm. I am at heart a teacher. Some people say, I come to teach love, but let's be honest. The core of who we are is love. When you connect with your 
breath and your higher source and with God and with Jesus or whoever is light you feel such enormous love when you speak with someone who practices love and prayer you feel such a bright hope and we all have it that's why I'm here we all have this light we all have this love we all have this hope it's here in every breath and even if I every day I just say just breathe mm -hmm. then that's that's enough and it's enough where you are right now you are enough. Thank you for that. Is there anything else that you would like to say? Breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Just breathe on. Yes. That's the most important thing. Find a way to make your breathing comfortable. Mm -hmm. Find a way to make your breathing sacred. Find a way to make your breathing routine. Mm -hmm. Good. Either in the morning or on the toilet, wherever you can Driving find. is a great way to okay. go breathing. Driving's excellent. Mm -hmm. Turn your music off and just breathe. All right. I think everyone could do that. Mm -hmm. And my love from my heart to all of you. You are loved. Always. Thank you. Are we ready to bring Carol back? Tell her she can cut her hair now. She can cut her hair now? She doesn't have to look like you anymore? <laughs> that, that was crazy, wasn't it? Why did you make her feel so short, by the way? There was a difference in our, there is a difference in our body. Mm -hmm. I wanted her to get used to how it feels to to actually have the physical overlaying. Mm -hmm. And the more she gets comfortable with the physical overlaying is that we are not alike. We have different body shapes. So I want her to be aware of the different body shape so that when she feels a shortness, so when she feels the longer hair, so when she feels her hands changing, it will be more comfortable mm -hmm. for her to be aware of the physicality of overlaying. Mm -hmm. So um, when Jesus was alive, that body, was it a short body? It was shorter than she is. <laughs> but you have to remember yes. that we were shorter. Yes. And I was just a regular man of... of height wise mm -hmm. at the time okay good so you're about my height then maybe <laughs> well i always feel seven feet tall but <laughs> in spirit yes. in spirit yes all right very good anything else that you would like to say are we complete today plant more green things mm. okay that's it that's good thank you so much so I'd like for you now to disconnect from Carol, please. And as we take a breath, I'm going to count from one to five with each number. I want you coming back more and more. One, beginning to wake up now to the sound of my voice. Two, feeling your essence coming back into your body, feeling the connection to the earth. Three, bringing back the personality known as Carol, feeling more wide awake, feeling the connection with your body, your hands, your feet, feeling your torso, your shoulders, your head. Four, five, coming back, coming back, coming back. <laughs> Welcome back. How do you feel? I was so aware my hair should be long. <laughs> no, I was so aware of that, that my hair should be just like long. Yeah, long? Yeah. So were you listening in? Yeah. 
And how did it feel? Still numb. Still numb. So we have a bunch of people out there. Uh, what would you like to tell them about this experience? How did it feel to you this time? It was a little different than last time. You weren't singing and dancing this time. No. It was very serious. About. I sensed this time that it was really not about me. Yep. It was just, he's really a serious teacher. He's really concerned yeah. with everyone's well being mm -hmm. and their basic things to do every day. And when I was getting, I could just feel him just like wandering around and I. <laughs> With the hair? Yeah, the hair was a big thing. And um, I, he didn't do any of the, the before, like I'd feel like him coming in with my breath. It was just more like he was wandering around. Mm -hmm. And he just really kept saying, this isn't about you. This is just... A message. A message. Yeah. And I was aware differently this time instead of the breath. It was like overlaying. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like my hands felt different and literally coming down here, I felt like my arms were getting like gummy bear. Mm -hmm. And, but I was, there was a, just, I had to do the whole trust thing with ego, yes. you know, yep. say angels, make sure that Jesus comes in. I'm not just like <laughs> any random hobo, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. but the thing that got me is, is just, you know, my face felt different. Yeah. And. You feel I could I could feel him do things that didn't feel like me. Yeah, while well, you were crossing like, your leg and you and, were, and you were he, had, more... he had something on his face. You think maybe a beard? Yeah, because I I could feel him. I'm like I don't have that on my face. What do you? And he would he would do more. He was, his motions were different than me. Well, I noticed every once in a while he would like cross your legs in a certain position, and it was, and he was. It was interesting because when he was here and he was waiting for me, we literally felt like I was like, I'm not ready yet. And he's like, well, okay, we'll just wait. We'll just wait until you're we'll ready. Just wait. And, and he's like, okay, you know what? We're just going to go ahead and I'm just going to start talking. And then as I talk, I'll just kind of continue the conversation. Which I'm like, oh, well, that makes sense because I'm used to him talking. So I let him start talking. And then I was just like, oh, well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, and... He's trying to find ways to let me know that it's not about me and say, you know, just, mm -hmm. this is just nothing to get upset about. It's just a channel. This is just what's going on and it's yeah. just okay. Yeah. And he's just, he has, he's really a basic teacher. That's really what I felt. He's just really a basic teacher. Yeah. You know? Well, that's why I asked the, the question, you know, what were you teaching for so long up in those hills with those people? For three days, you know, they, they say that he would be up there and people would just be fascinated with what he was saying. But I could feel that too. But what he said was essential, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and yeah. it's very simple, but it's really essential. Mm -hmm. And that's not the kind of stuff that was written about him, unfortunately. Yeah. His teachings. He And he is. That's what yeah. he was. He's just, and when, and he's a really patient man. Yeah. He's a very patient, kind loving and he just comes from a very a simple love you know like a monk or tibetan monk yes. they just have that simple love mm -hmm. yeah no judgment just 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 love yeah and it's like i can't really describe it because it just it's just a simple love yeah that's amazing a lot to think about I really, <laughs> I really like him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Now we haven't seen each other in about two years. Oh, really? Yeah. It's almost two years. It'll be in August. It'll be wow. two years. So what has happened in the last two years? Have you been getting more connection with him? He's actually been working with me differently mm. before it was like, you know, getting me to the breathe and stuff. But yeah. literally I had been going up the mountain 
in the, the snow with the blizzards. Yeah. And it really wasn't just me. It's just everything around me is just crazy. And so I've been trying to do what he said, which is, and literally like, I will be just starting to freak out when I can hear a presence. I don't know if it's him. I don't yeah. know who it is, but he will say, just stop. Just breathe. Just be in the moment. Mm -hmm. And and then when I when I breathe and I'm in the moment, then I hear him say, This is the only thing that's important. Right here, right now, you are okay. Wow. So I've literally been having and it's not just me, really. It's just literally the craziness that's going on around me is affecting me. And I really do feel like the whole what the world's going through is what I've been experiencing. Yeah. But literally, I've been luckily that I have, you know, reminding me about breathing, reminding me. And the whole thing, the important part about breathing is when you stop and you breathe and you're in that state of breath. And then I hear that voice say, right now, right here, you are okay. And everything is fine. And I'm like, oh. Okay, and I guess that's the whole point. That's the whole point of being in the moment of now. Yeah. There's nothing happening in the moment of now except what's yeah. happening now. And like five minutes before, I was in the middle of a blizzard struggling up the mountain, right. literally. Yeah. And, it's, and it's like, so I've really been experiencing everything. But part of me really is like, but right here, right now, you're okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's been a... I don't want to say a learning experience, but it's a per perceptive experience. Well, a lot of our blizzard is in our own mind, too. So How we perceive things that are happening. And I've had enormous coincidences happening all really? the time. It's just... And it just kind of blows me. But then I've had enormous coincidences happening all my life. <laughs> you know, that really just... I'm blessed to have. I think a lot of people have those blessings, but they don't focus on it. If you were to look back at your whole life and seen miracles that happen every day, you know, near accidents and uh, resolutions that you never expected or money coming in the mail when you didn't expect it, you know, things that you go, yeah. how did that happen? And those are the, the snowflakes that he was talking yeah. about, that even though you're in the storm, you're trudging through the snow, the, the, the snow flakes are actually all those, those helpers, all those angels that are there yeah. to help you. But we I, don't see them. Like the biggest thing is, and I don't know how it happened or when it happened, it was just one of those weird things that I was just listening to something. And out of nowhere it said, and when Moses' people were in the desert and every day they looked for food and every day that they were going to starve. But every day they were given what they needed. Yeah. And I was like... And it's true. <laughs> it's true. You know? So... We always get what we need. Not what we want, but what we need. And I've been having moments like that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, it's been... Even though I'm in my mid-60s, it's been really... I've been learning a lot about myself. <laughs> you and me both, sister. <laughs> you know, and I don't I don't know, to be really flat out honest, I don't know what's going to go on with Jesus and me. And it's like today, it's like, he's like, you know, all I need you to do is show up. And he kept yeah. saying that, all I yeah. need you to do is show up. He goes, don't worry about it, just show yeah. up. So I'm like, and he just said that to me. He goes, don't worry about what happens. All I need you to do is show up. And I'm like, Oh, well, that's really simple. Well, I was getting the same message because, you know, usually I like to have guidelines of questions and stuff. And I was thinking, you know, what should I ask? And, and I was getting like, just, just be there. <laughs> just, just be there. Just listen. And it's like, okay, all right, I'll be here. And, uh, so this has been a great treat for yeah. me, you know, just to be able to just sit back and, <laughs> and, and focus on my cameras. <laughs> well, you know, when he's, he's such, a different teacher. I mean, yeah. there's so many teachers that you just feel really have... relaxed with him. You feel really relaxed. Like basically, there's there's no way you can get it wrong. Just just keep trying. Just get out there. If you can't do it this way, do it this way. It's, it's not like a teacher that says you must do it this way. I mean, he basically gave us like three or four or five different ways of breathing, of meditating. 
there's no one way, you know, if you, if, if you're anal about numbers, you know, count with your fingers, you can see them. If you're distracted, do something else. So each one, and, and there was a moment there where there was total silence and it was focus on the silence, just enjoy the silence. And it was like so blissful for me because I've been doing that more and more and, uh, just, just spending a moment just in total silence and and i'm the type of person i i don't heart i hardly listen to music i don't watch tv i don't listen to music in the car i am in silence most of my day except when i'm talking with clients and to me it's so blissful the silence is so blissful it was it felt like when i was over there wherever i was <laughs> it really just it felt and it wasn't silence it just felt you know when you're at the beach and it's quiet, yes. but it's not quiet? Yes, yes. And it's like, that's what it felt like. Yeah. I felt just so, I felt a lot of vibration uh, because when I'm in quiet, I feel like I'm riding vibrations. Yeah, it felt yeah. like that. Yeah. Because it was quiet and it was silence, but it wasn't. But it's vibration. To me, I was like riding a wave of vibrations. Um, but like I said, I, I'm in that state most of my time when I'm by myself. I don't have music on. I don't have background stuff going on. So, you know, it just felt good for a moment. It, just, it did. Like just. And it was, and that was the odd thing is it didn't feel like silence. Mm -hmm. And maybe that, that will be helpful to whoever's listening yes. is that it, silence, when you get used to it, doesn't feel like silence. No, no. I, no, it doesn't feel like silence to me. Uh, whenever I go to play music, I, it's like, no, it's, it's too noisy now. <laughs> yeah. Too much stuff going on. That was amazing though. Wow. Fantastic. So we've got a lot of people out there. We've got 96 people watching on the live. What do you want to tell all these people? Oh, it's, it's, I'm just sitting here. You're just sitting here. <laughs> yeah, you have I really say. feel like anything I say is superfluous because yeah. it's like, he really just said everything. I just kind of, you were just there. You were just yeah. a vehicle. You know, and it's like, I'm just really what I have to say is just like, I'm an everyday person. Yeah. Well, you know? we, all, we all, but we're all, we all everyday person, but we're all special in our own way. So you have a great gift. It doesn't feel like it's my gift. It's never going to feel like that. When I do my work and I'm channeling myself because I do my hypnosis sessions and I put myself into a trance also, um, I'm, I'm saying stuff that I don't know where it's coming from. I just talk and it just comes out and, and later I'll listen maybe for a little while and go, where did that come from? You know, like, where, how did I come up with that? That's but I'm cool. picking up, you know, from my own higher self or guides or whoever's channeling through me. They seem like whoever your higher self is and Jesus seem like they already have a relationship. Because when it seems like you were just like sitting around and just chilling, you yeah, know? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it feels like. It feels very comfortable. And I seem to have that connection, um, uh, you, you know, with a lot of people that, you know, for some reason I was, I chose to come here and work with certain people who can channel these entities, you know, and bring out this information. So I guess we're all a team. That would make sense though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it makes it easy. So, uh, all right. So we have a few things. <laughs> Someone says before you were in the womb, I knew you. I think I knew a lot of people. <laughs> I must have gotten around a lot. Well, the only thing I was aware of, yeah. and, and that was because I saw you yeah. is when he was talking about everybody on a hill. Yes. As I saw you on the hill. So I think a lot of people that feel that yeah. we're all kind of hanging out on that hill. Yeah. With, with the him. with the message yeah yeah amazing all right so i'm going to sign off here from uh, facebook thank you everyone for watching and let's finish this recording all right ending live recording it gives you such a cool sound here there you go so we got that one done wow that was so different. Yeah, he was, he was really, he literally came up when he was like staying beside me and going. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are. I can't believe it's been that long.
Almost two years. Yeah, I was just looking at the at the video, and it was a long. Wow. It was in 2017. So it was amazing. It doesn't feel like it was that long. No, no. So we have uh, just done this live, and this is a video recording right now, and um, this was a great, great experience. It's different every time we do it, but yeah. then that's probably that way for you too. Oh, absolutely. The last time uh, was very funny. You know, he was singing and kind of being kind of kind of clownish. But I'll have to tell you, I have to share something with you, which uh, I did not share with the public. Um, during that last video, there was a part where I cut out at the end, and um, I asked Jesus about to give me some information for me, some advice for me. All right, and He said, "Be careful with your feet," which was a really strange thing for for Jesus to be telling you. Be careful with your feet, right? And. Uh, <laughs> He said, you you got to get better shoes. <laughs> okay. Which is why I didn't put it out in the video because it was kind of crazy. you got to get better shoes. And I said, well, you know, what about flip-flops? You know, we're, we're in Florida. We, no, no, it has to be closed shoes and they've got to be good shoes because you're going to be traveling the world and you need to have good shoes. Okay? And I don't really have like like hiking shoes or anything. So right after that, I go to Phoenix, <laughs> and in Phoenix, I had a cancellation for a session, and there was no way possible that I could get that session filled. I couldn't get it filled. You know, I, I tried every way, and my system wasn't working. So I said, "Oh well, I'm just going to go out and and see what I could do on on this time off." And I ended up at a mall because it's hot out, and the first store I see. It was like a Macy's or something. And I walked in and it was the shoe department. And I went, oh, <laughs> I guess you want me to buy shoes, do you? Wow. And I found these shoes that were more like for hiking. You know, they, they were nice shoes, but not, you know, they were sturdy, very leather shoes. And the following few days, I had to go to Sedona. I would never have made that trip with the shoes I had taken. I needed those shoes. Wow, that's a coincidence. Uh, not. <laughs> <laughs> and right after that, I went to New Zealand, which, which has a lot of hills, and I would never have been able to make these trips with my, with my shoes that I was wearing. So every time I was walking anywhere, I kept, I kept saying, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Because he was he was making me aware of the situation, which to anybody would seem well. That's kind of silly, you know. Why are you telling me about shoes? But I really needed to buy shoes that were sturdy for my travels. Wow! It has saved. Me. And he even went and made sure he went in a store and got them. And the cancel and that cancellation, I could not book it. That's weird. If I would not have had that cancellation, I would not have had the shoes. I it think he's work. around you. Oh, yeah, I think so. Because, I mean, it's like, yeah, he's around me, but it's like, obviously, he's not listening. I'm going to go over and talk to her for a while. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you know, it's something that's always been in my mind to tell you because uh, that was kind of personal, and, and I don't put personal stuff out there. But, um, yeah. Wow. It was a silly little But thing. he does stuff like that to me, too. It seems really stiff, silly, but it's like, wow. But it makes were. sense. So if he's a teacher, he's telling you stuff. So this was a great session. Really good. Now you can get a haircut. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to, because he's like, I really like your hair like this. Yeah, because that you were. That's everybody uh, needs to know. You were told not to get your hair cut. Yeah. Because he wanted to feel the hair. And it's and it's like he still wants it lot. And I'm like, bless his heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, that's how it is. But you know, and it's like a really, I can really. Yeah. And this sounds weird, but sometimes when I feel him. Yes. The presence. Yeah. He's like, it's like down here. Yeah. You know? And he just, and when he walked, you know? <laughs> and I don't know. I mean, it's, it's almost like he really enjoyed walking. Yeah. Because, you know, when someone enjoys walking, they got that gait, you know? And I could, I, it's hilarious to think of a picture of Jesus walking and going like this. 
you know, just flipping the hair. When it is like he would love to walk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and what we think, what we perceive of Jesus, now you're feeling that it's a totally different type of person. Yeah. 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 I see him as a very personable, um, you know, uh, happy person, you know, that can make jokes and, and can reel you into the conversation. And he wants to explain cosmic stuff simply, which yes. is... Poof. Yeah. Which other people aren't doing. They want to make it too difficult. And that's that's... It's amazing. I love it. He needs, and the, the odd, the interesting thing to me is, is the simplicity that he brings. Yeah. You know, as I feel a real, when he's here, it's like, let's, let's bring this down the level. Let's, let's. And that's why those people sat around for days listening to him talk because it was easy. They didn't, he didn't go over their heads. He knew how to bring the material to them, which most people can't do nowadays. They, they, they're more into the ego and they can't explain things, you know, to, to, uh, someone who's never heard this before. And the thing that got me is, I was like listening and he was talking about the, I'm like, what, really? And then it made sense because I was listening to him and he was talking about the waves. The waves. And I'm like, well, that makes sense yeah. because everybody was talking about the waves and he's like, there's always been there. And I'm like, wow, really? Wow. Yeah, amazing. I just, it's for me, you know, I'm getting better, but literally letting him just say his simple truth, which is, I am not a simple person. I complicate stuff like everybody else. <laughs> so when he speaks, he, he is, he likes to make the cosmic simple. That's what I get from him. Yeah. Well, life is supposed to be simple. We complicate it. Animals, I complicate it. Yeah. Animals live a simple life. Trees live a simple life. We're the ones that make it complicated. And I've done that. And, it's, and he literally, his purpose in my life is to say, stop. Just breathe. Breathe. Yeah. And then the second part of it is after you breathe, right now in this moment, everything is okay and you are fine. So there's like two parts. Mm-hmm. One is breathing and the other one is recognizing the moment in the moment being be present so learning i don't think i'm ever going to quit learning from them ever well i hope we uh do another one of these sessions soon it's getting me out here to tampa or getting you somewhere where i am yeah it's cool i enjoy it because i learned so much just before he like just before i do a lot of shifting not shifting but shifting like the wave yeah yeah yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. Well, we don't want to be shifting too much. No. And he's very, he's, he, like I said before, when he was a breath work and, and now it's just like, no, just show up. Just, just show up. That's what I loved about this. You know, it's like, I, I got the same message. Just be there. Just be okay. All right. I just got to deal with the camera. Yeah. Know? And, and it's like, and so I know next time it's going to be, you're going to let him know and he's going to let me know and I'm just going to show up because it's, that seems like the pattern. Exactly. Is it when it's right, it'll happen and yeah. everybody shows up. I'm like, oh, well, that's kind of cool. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed this, uh, this session. It was great. Yeah. Uh, we are in Tampa, Florida. And um, if you would like a session with me, this is a little bit different than Carol. This is my day off. <laughs> <laughs> This is my vacation. Go, go hang with Jesus on your day yeah, off. Yeah, this is what I do on my days off. <laughs> if you want a session with me, just go to my website, albowyman.com, and sign up for the newsletter. The newsletter comes out about once a month. It'll tell you where I'm going to be. And um, when it comes out, click on those links, and uh, I hope I get to see you at one of these sessions. Thank you very much for watching. Breathe. Breathe. <gasps> Give me that hug. Mm.